Amber Heard. Narcissism on show. Video analysis. Deposition food. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, here to educate you about narcissism using my unrivaled expertise. I have delved back through time to extract various pieces of footage of Amber Heard so that you can see that her narcissism isn't just on display at the current trial involving Johnny Depp, but there are repeated examples of it in action. Indeed, every time she's filmed and she's interacting with somebody else, her narcissism is operating. Here is a deposition recording from 2016. It's been edited showing a variety of aspects from it. I do have the longer clip, which, if time allows me to do so, I'll analyse separately. But I wanted to provide this to you as part of the Narcissism on Show video, video analysis series to enable you to get a flavour of what's going on. Because again, it shows various aspects of the narcissistic dynamic in action and helps you understand why Heard behaves as she does. Here comes the clip. Hugh, would you listen to this, please? This is punching. It's one of them. Right. It says punching. Let's get one. Do anything to happen. Let's say that was an accident. I, I remember hitting you as a hitting you with the door, or hitting your head. I, I, I did not do this thing with the door. I, I do remember. And Put punching on the edge of the jaw. And, okay, I'm sorry. With a closed fist. Mm. I don't know what part of my body I, I put in between me and him and, and her. But I would have done anything. I would have done anything to prevent her from being pushed down a flight of stairs. Of itself, he grabs my, um, he, gra he uh, grabs my head, um, takes a fistful of my hair and says, I hit your eye, I hit your eye, hon, let me see your eye. Let me see. Let me see your eye. What if I pull your hair back? And he's got me by the hair. And he, um, it's hard to describe. It's, it's like yanking me from side to side with my, with my hair. Um, Is it your testimony? Calm things. <laughs> well, Amber Heard was certainly getting her teeth into plenty of stuff, and so shall we. She's asked, would you listen to this? She answers, sure. But she carries on faffing with the food that she's brought. Now, she's attending a deposition, which is a serious part of the legal process. It's where testimony is provided for the purposes of the appropriate legal process and the litigation that the person is involved in. It might be as a witness, it might be as a primary party to the litigation. And therefore, it is a matter which ought to be addressed in a serious fashion. The fact that her turns up and immediately starts faffing about with food, and as you've seen through the clip, that she repeatedly pops what looks like some kind of fruit, I think, into her mouth, demonstrates a lack of accountability and a sense of entitlement. I'll sit here and eat. It's bad-mannered, but I don't care, because I'm Amber Heard and I do what I want. In fact, Although she does utilise a facade, the fact is that it's intermittent in nature, and she actually won't think that there's anything wrong in what she's doing. Her sense of entitlement will drive her to eat this food while she's at a deposition. So first of all, bringing it in the first place shows her sense of entitlement, and the fact that she repeatedly shoves it in her mouth when she's being asked questions and when she's expected to answer demonstrates a lack of accountability to the process. It demonstrates the haughty aspect of her as well. In effect, she's also unconsciously triangulating the person questioning her with her food, utilising the food as a distraction in order to nullify the threat to control posed by the person asking the questions. So at first she carries on faffing with the food and then looks at the person next to her, which is presumably her own lawyer, and it appears that what she's been invited to listen to is a tape recording of both her and Johnny Depp. She looks bored, which shows her haughtiness and lack of accountability, demonstrates her dismissiveness, which is another haughty behaviour. 
we then see a glance of the smirk, which is as a consequence of her reaction to the receipt of fuel that's occurring and the assertion of control that she's unconsciously experiencing. If you'd like to understand more about the narcissist smirk, watch my video of that name. We then see repeated instances where she's sticking the food in her mouth, and therefore what I've explained in relation to that previously once again applies, and we also see an eye roll demonstrating her dismissiveness and haughtiness. The whole set of behaviours demonstrates that I shouldn't be here, and why am I being asked to do this, and I've got better things to do. I'm Amber Heard, you know. When there's a comment about a closed fist, she's asked a question. But her mouth's full, and she just sits there chewing, holding her hand up, nullifying the threat to control by focusing on eating rather than being a polite individual and answering the question. In a further part of the deposition, she finally starts to talk. And note that the question that she's been asked has been clearly a threat to her control because the response is to demonstrate some ignited fury. Look at her body language. She leans forward, jaw jutting forward, an aggressive pose. And she states, I would have done anything, anything to prevent her from being pushed down a flight of stairs. This is cognitive empathy, where she suggests that she would aid somebody else. She's aggressive, confrontational, and it's being done in order to nullify the threat to control posed by the question that she's asked. In the final section of the deposition, she's almost lost for words. We watch the almost comical reenactment as she talks about the fact that he, presumably Depp, grabbed my head and takes some of the hair. And she then does a backwards and forwards action as if to indicate somebody's head being slammed against a wardrobe or against a tabletop. She attempts to look distressed, which is part of her narcissism-selecting pity play as a means to assert control over those who are assembled. However, such as her low cognitive function, she's unable to describe what's gone on. Now, an untrained viewer of this footage would think, poor Amber, she's overcome with grief, overcome with fear and sadness for what she's experienced. Look, she's so traumatised, she can't even get the words out to explain what's happened to her. And this is a good example of how certain people end up being conned by narcissists because they think that she's so choked up about the recollection of the experience. She isn't. What's actually happening is, because she's a narcissist, her narcissism has selected pity play in order to assert control, and her level of cognitive function is such that rather than being able to articulate herself, she's left flapping her arm backwards and forwards as if she was working a machine in a factory, and then gesticulating wildly, saying it's hard to describe. We then move on again, and at this point it seems to be the denouement to the recollection of this apparent physical altercation, which is a pr likely to be a revision of history and didn't actually occur. She's now again playing up to being distressed by making a calming motion with her hands and talking about calm things. This is her narcissism playing up. What it's attempting to do is create the impression that she's hugely distressed by what has occurred to her. Remember, she's a narcissist and therefore her level of distress is purely manufactured by the narcissism through the revision of history in order to assert control over, one, Johnny Depp, because he's in the room, so to speak, because he's come up on her radar, two, the lawyers that are there watching and any other members of staff, and three, anybody else that happens to have popped up on our radar. Her narcissism needs to assert control over all of these individuals, and she does so by way of provocation, by suggesting that Depp is a violent, unhinged individual, and she also does so by way of pity play, by suggesting that she's very much the victim here, and that she's so traumatised, she's unable to actually explain what has happened to her. This piece of footage I may well, as I indicated earlier, examine in greater detail. But it provides you with an excellent opportunity to understand many facets of her behaviour and for you not to be conned by this con artist. I'll now replay the footage so that you can watch it again with the added knowledge that I've just provided to you. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.
cue. Would you listen to this, please? She says punching. That's one of the one says punching. Let's keep going. Do anything to her. Let's say that was an accident. I, I remember hitting you as a rape adult, hitting you with the door, or, or hitting your head. I, I, I did not do this thing with the door. I, I do remember. And I'm, I'm punching on the edge of the jaw. Okay, I'm sorry. With a closed fist. Mm. I don't know what part of my body I, I put in between me and him and, and her. But I would have done anything. I would have done anything to prevent her from being pushed down a flight of stairs. Of itself, he grabs my, um, he, gra he uh, grabs my head, um, takes a fistful of my hair and says, I hit your eye, I hit your eye, huh? let me see your eye. Let me see. Let me see your eye. What if I pull your hair back? And he's got me by the hair. And he, um, it's hard to describe. It's, it's like yanking me from side to side with my, with my hair. Um, Is it your testimony? Calm things. Is it your testimony?